All right, good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good uh, Thursday. Today, I finally got the uh, the honeycomb bed securing fixtures done. Uh, I'm doing final testing. I want to do a video and show you what it is all about. Um, so we're going to be in split screen here, so you can kind of see different angles of what I'm what I'm doing. Um, but first, I want to show you what I have. All right. So everybody knows the honeycomb bed. It just moves around with little to no effort. If you're doing, um, if you're doing anything, sorry, I'm just getting the chat up to make sure everything's going. Uh, if you're trying to do anything repetitive on the honeycomb table and you're relying on some sort of squaring, uh, whether it be doing doing tape on the bed, and then uh, making a, a box basically, and then lining up that way, or like in this case, I've, I've made um, some a square for the bed. So once you have the bed lined up and square, um, you can secure your pieces. I know it's not square, but you can you can manipulate it either way you want put it by putting it in different holes. Um, but anyways, so the, the problem here is is it was brought to me by another user. I don't use a honeycomb table very often, um, and if I do, it's not generally for repetitive um, tasks. So I've never really had a, a a need to do anything about it. Um, but uh, as a couple people brought it to my attention, it's, it's, it's quite an issue, and I would agree. Um, I have used it in the past, but like I said, it's not. I haven't done like a mass production where I'm taking things on and off um, to where it's, it, it becomes an issue as far as staying secure. But if you're doing a lot of repetitive on and off things on the table, uh, it could be very useful. So, anyways. I'm trying to keep. I'm gonna try to keep this video short, um, and then I gotta start planning for a hurricane party. But uh, so what we have here is under the bed. You can lift the bed up. I'm gonna lift it up here and put it out of the way so you can kind of see what I'm what I'm working with. All right. So on the bed, you'll notice there's the three red brackets all right these are simple thumb screw pieces that uh, go on to where your knife blades typically rest um, what you got to do and if you can see here in, the, in the, the video right here if you look close you can see a black mark there there's a black mark there there's one here in the middle and there's one all the way out here at the other end if you're using three of them the the, the kit or the, the, it'll be sold in sets of three. You can use one, two, or three, or if you want more, you can do more. Um, on your smaller machines, you may be able to do it on the back side, but this is a, a 3655, and it's almost impossible to get to the back <laughs> um, to do it, fun uh, make it functional. So I use three up front to hold everything straight. All you do is you simply, it's just a, it's a, it's a clamping mechanism with a, with a thumb screw, you simply once you once you uh, when you first start, you'll set it up. You'll look down through your honeycomb table, and with it lined up where you want it on the bed, you'll line it up, and then you'll look down through the holes and find out which one of these rungs uh, closely lines up with the holes on the honeycomb. Once you found that out, then you can go ahead and put a mark like I have. So that way every time that I put it on, I put it on the same spot every time. You just slip it down over it and you tighten it up and it don't have to be super tight because um, it's kind of a dual purpose. One, once you start putting everything together, if the bed itself is uh, kind of out of, out of shape, you can manipulate these a little bit when you tighten down the Allen heads on the clamp, the top part. 
it'll it'll bring everything together and sandwich the bed between those two and with this locked in here it won't let the bed move now the bed does move slightly um, I will say that but that's mainly because of the uh, the honey the honeycomb itself is not a very rigid um, structure so it does move a little bit and you also get these top clamps that come with it and it'll come these are 30 millimeter uh, bolts but it's going to come with 35s uh, I got them coming they should be here Friday but uh, these are what help hold it together if you notice the piece let me get this angle right here the piece sticking out there that actually goes down through your honeycomb to help line everything up but I'm going to start at the end and I'm going to find where my honeycomb lines up the best it's not going to be exactly right on the bed but after you get them started and you get it down in there and you get the thread started you can you can leave it then you do your next one get it started and then your last one now by doing this um, it allows you to be able to kind of shift the bed around even 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 with that I mean it's it's secure it's not even tight yet um, so if you need to get the bed 100% square with your with your gantry you can go ahead and do that now uh, make sure these are straight because there is a little tab on the bottom uh, that's notched out to fit over this metal and still allow a flat contact on the bed itself so it helps hold everything down all right so once you get it lined up it's square it's wherever you want it to be like I said I've already showed you without even tightening anything down it's already pretty much secure now you just tighten them down they don't need to be super tight some people like to use German torque you, know, you, you got to be careful this is plastic and it is honeycomb I mean it can break um, now you got them all tightened down now the bed doesn't move at all it's completely secure you'll see a little bit of movement there but that's the actual bed frame itself moving not the, the honeycomb table uh, the honeycomb table is secure it's not going to go anywhere so now that you're do when you're doing your re repeat jobs and everything, you're just putting stuff in, taking it out. You don't have to worry about the bed moving, shifting out of place to where your alignment gets knocked off and you mess up some parts or ruin some material because um, the bed moved. So however you set this up, it's up to you. This is just how I've done it. This is the way it was designed. Like I said, it's not exactly, depending on your honeycomb, it may be about a... a eighth inch away on either side from from edge to the front or to the, to the right side um, the biggest thing is you want to make sure the most important thing is you want to make sure that you have your clearance along your edges make sure all your edges are clear so when you're raising and lowering the bed it's not going to obstruct it it's not going to hit anything it's not going to damage anything hey chad what's going on thanks man yeah, I got this. Th this idea came from from somebody. Um, I I don't remember who it was, and I hate I hate to say that because um, I'd like to give them uh, their their credit for for thinking of this. It's something that I've thought about, but I, I don't use a honeycomb bed really hardly if ever. Um, and like I said, if I do, it's usually just a quick on. I want something flat. Uh, otherwise, I use the knife blades, and then I have other other tools to hold those still and, and clamp down and everything like that. I will be coming out again. This is the bed square for the the uh, the honeycomb. And like I said, it's it's based off of the original bed square that I made for. I know the light's kind of bad, and it's, this is based off the same design as I have for the knife blades. Um, but it's got pegs on the back. There's three of them. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to go with three pegs or two. Two is a lot easier to line up. 
um, but they just simply just go in, find the holes, press it down, and as you can see, it's it's square to the, I mean, just visually, um, it's square to the box frame. Yeah, yeah, Chad. <laughs> Um, this, th I gotta say this, out of all the tools that I've made, um, for the, the boss laser or for use on the boss laser, I'm not affiliated with boss laser at all. Um, but all the tools that I've made for this machine, this is probably one of the most challenging. I've gone through, uh, five different iterations of it. Um, cause I'd try one thing and it would fail or it would work and then it would just, it wouldn't. It wouldn't suit my um, uh, I don't know I'm very picky <laughs> so it didn't it didn't it didn't fit me it, I wasn't happy with it so I came up with another idea and I thought okay well why don't we just use the existing pieces that are already part of the machine clamp onto those latch them down and be done now keep in mind these tabs they stick up about seven to seven point five millimeters above the surface of the honeycomb. Um, it's important to keep that in mind. The good thing is if you attach them to the front, you don't have to worry about it when the machine homes and it goes into the back right corner. You don't have to worry about the machine uh, homing. Thanks, Lexi. Um, you don't have to worry about the, the nozzle hitting these when your machine goes to home and then comes back. Uh, I tried to keep them as low profile as I could. Uh, if I go any shorter than this or any smaller than this, it uh, they tend to break. So, absolutely, yeah. I mean, everything everything I do. I mean, I've had some criticism on here about you know what I what materials I use to print with and things like that. I have my reasons for what I use. Um, not everybody agrees with them, but through my testing and my uh, experience with 3D printing and the laser itself and how things are going. Um, I use my best judgment and, and when I test them, I go with what works best. And in this case and in every case that I've had so far, because nothing I have is, is, is put under great strain or uh, great stress to where, um, you have to worry about it breaking or if it does like these, I had a, I had a huge problem with the original design on these breaking because the original design had the pin coming up from the bottom and when you're tightening it down that pin would twist and you could only make the pin so big so this way the pin on the top piece um, and I'll remove that for anybody's checking it out now that didn't see it at the beginning um, this this is the pin that goes in the plastic pin sticking down is what helps line up the honeycomb and it keeps the slack out of the the, the bracket to um, kind of ensure that you have as little or no movement as possible and like I said also they're notched it's a very small notch it's only one millimeter um, notch in it that actually compensates for the distance from the bed to the, the, the height of the bed and the height of the uh, aluminum bracket around the outside like I said it's just a simple tighten down and you're done and in theory, when all this is put on and uh... <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I like to recap at the end because some people catching up at the end. But anyways, I'll show I'll take it all apart at the very end and show you kind of in the re reverse direction. But there's three tabs that the kit cut will come with three of them. Um, you can use one, two or three. It's up to you, whatever you want. I use three because my bed's 55 inches across, um, and I found that in the middle, I would have a lot of shifting back and forth in the middle where the outsides would stay stay tight. The inside would kind of shift a little bit, so I put three on this one. Um, the smaller beds and stuff, I, uh, you can use two, um, but I wouldn't recommend using one because it, it'll... I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose. It'll shift in some way, for, form or fashion. But anyways, I hope to have these things ready to go here soon. Uh, we got the hurricane coming this way, and depending on how bad it is, uh, it may be down for a little bit. Um, I got to start getting things ready and prepped around here uh, for that to come. 
but uh, I was planning on having things ready to go by this weekend, but with, with the storm coming and uh, almost imminent that we're going to get hit, uh, I got to prepare for that and take care of things around the house. So, but anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this, let everybody see it, just join in to see what kind of what we got. We got three tabs here that holds the top, the top part of the clamp that holds the top of the bed. Um, all you do is simple um, 3.5 millimeter Allen head, takes them out. Um, these, like I said before, these are 30 millimeter bolts. 35 millimeter bolts will be coming with the kit. Um, I just had 30 millimeters available, and luckily it was just enough to to uh, to work. So now all the tabs are out. You can kind of see the tabs sitting here. Pretty pretty simple. Um, but again, a lot a lot of effort went into to making these, um, and this is probably the fifth iteration of it or redesign completely. I had five different designs, and all of them failed except for this one. Um, but uh, the the bed. Even with the lower clamp still in place, the bed can move around freely if you want. Um, so it doesn't obstruct the movement of the bed if you want to move it, whatever you're doing. But anyways, you can take it out just the same. I'll just slide it to the back so you can kind of see. All right. Um, so here, you can see one of them right here. There's three of these, uh, one at each end, and one here r roughly in the middle. Like I said, you gotta you got to put the bed on, find your marks, and I put black marks. Um, on the bed itself, you can see kind of right there. Um, that way I know where to put the clamps if I take them off. But with them there, they're really not in the way. So once you get them put in place, in theory, you shouldn't have to mess with them. Uh, thanks, Lexi. We'll try. <laughs> we, we've, we've toughed out quite a few of them down here over the years. Um, but uh, mainly i got to get this place buttoned up because... Uh, my shop here, if it gets really bad, uh, it kind of floods. <laughs> it gets a couple inches of water, so i got to make sure I get everything off the ground and, and all that stuff. Um, but anyways, so uh, these these go in place. It's just a simple thumb screw. Loosen it, pops right off. Um, let me show you there. The lighting kind of sucks, and the cameras don't want to focus. But it's pretty, it's pretty simple um, now that it's done. <laughs> It wasn't so simple figuring it out, but like I said, you keep the, the thumb screw in there. When you go back to put it in, you drop it down over it, and it fits in these grooves right here. Um, you have to do a little close-up. See the grooves in the bed. Um, the grooves in the bed right here where your blades sit in, it just goes, they go in one of those grooves. So, I mean, you can spare three grooves on your on your bed or two if you got a smaller bed. Um and you can just lock them in place. They don't have to be real tight. Just lock them down. You're ready to go. Uh, on, a, on a big bed like this, it's not that big of a deal for me um, because I have plenty of room. But if you have a smaller bed, it does take up a little bit of your room on the bed. Um, on, wherever you're putting the, the brackets, it takes up a little bit of space along the edge. So you will lose a little bit of room there. But if you strategically place them, uh, to best suit whatever application you're using them for, it should never be a problem. Uh, and again, when you zero your head or when you turn the machine on, they're up front. So when your your machine zeroes to the back right, it doesn't have any issues. Um, so I tried to think <laughs> I tried to think of everything. If I miss anything or if, if anybody gets them and and tries them out and can give me a um, a different opinion on on how they are or how they work for you. Uh, I'm open and welcoming to uh, the criticism and or comments to, to try to make it better. Uh, like I said, soon the bed square will come out. Um, and then uh, I also have the, the rotary stabilizer. I don't know if you'll really see it. Down, down there in the bottom the rotary stabilizer for the 16 um, size machines up to the 36 um, to help hold your, your rotary still. Um, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're using a honeycomb, the honeycomb bed, uh, you're not really losing, you're going to lose a little bit of, of 
space. I mean, the, the pieces themselves that you're that you're talking about here are 20 millimeters wide, and the part that'll be on the bed itself is only about 12 millimeters. So that's all you're gonna the space you're gonna lose. Now, if you're using the standoff pins like I got, um, or if you're, um, so they have have these here, the the standoff pins that slip right down inside, and then you can lay your material on top of it. Um, or if you do like I do, I use a four inch lens uh, pretty much all the time, uh, unless I'm doing like photographs or really high detailed images. Most of the stuff I do is large scale, so I don't. I don't bother with the two inch, um, uh, but if if you have a two inch and it's mounted in the, the manufacturer's configuration, which is in the top of the housing, uh, then you'll have an issue. If you're trying to go near these, they might hit. Um, but if you put the lens in the bottom of the assembly, you, you won't have to worry about them hitting. Um, but uh, as far as the space you lose, like I said, if you're using like these standoffs or something like that to help keep the material up off the bed, uh, it won't be an issue. Or if you just place them as far out of the way as you can, that way you're not taking up any space. But, but again, it's only it's 10 millimeters, really. <laughs> 10 to 12 millimeters is, is about the room. It's only in the spot where that clamp is. So in between the two clamps, you're not effectively changing or missing anything. Um, yeah, that, uh, the bed square, that's another thing I was working on. I was hoping to have done this week, but like I said, with the hurricane coming, um, I've got to kind of put things on hold uh, for this weekend because i got a lot of stuff to uh, tend to to get ready for that. So uh, this will be my last video until after that all comes through, which will probably be uh, done and out of here by midweek next week, and hopefully I'll get back on. I won't get on video, but I'll, I'll definitely keep plugging away at trying to get uh, the rest of the stuff ironed out. Um, but uh, other than that, I really appreciate everybody checking it, checking out the page and checking out this video. If you ever have any questions or like most of this stuff comes from, it comes from people that uh, bring up a concern or an issue that they're having, and I try to find a solution to fix it. And... The, the pegs for the honeycomb table, the bed square, and the clamp are all things that came from, from people on this page, uh, whether it's uh, the boss page or the my laser me this page or even this, this page, the to, uh, tools and jigs page. Um, so, uh, yeah, keep, keep ideas coming. If you have any ideas, uh, my next big thing is trying to figure out how to to uh, create a clamping system for the honeycomb bed uh, like like if any of you have the uh, the clamp system I made for the, the knife blades it is gonna be something similar to that but it'll be with the honeycomb and uh, hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to figure that out that's, that's been a little bit more complex um, for obvious reasons, because it's trying to eliminate tools and manipulate or, or cutting in anything or damaging anything, I, trying to make things as quick and easy as possible, like all the other stuff that I do, uh, is, is virtually tool free except for the, the use of a three and a half millimeter Allen key. Um, but uh, yeah, keep coming. Hope everybody has a good rest of your week and weekend, and hopefully, we'll be back on here mid next week with an update on on this that I just showed you, the bed square and the rotary uh, platform as well. Uh, stay tuned, you can get to the order, if you go to JR Custom Designs forward slash shop, or dot com forward slash shop and go under JER Custom Tools, um, you'll find all the stuff I have for the Boss Laser. Uh, some of the stuff's there it's available it's just not shipping yet um, so if you want to get something you can go ahead and do that now and uh, it'll ship as soon as I'm able to or, or as soon as the the working version is done and please rest assured that I would not put out anything um, I wouldn't put anything out that's not to my standard and, and if something is wrong I stand behind my my stuff so 
any comments, questions, concerns, if anybody has anything that has become damaged or broke or whatever, let me know and let's get it taken care of. Um, but anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I got to go start getting things, things ready for, uh, uh, for the storm. But like I said, check out Laser Me This on Facebook. Follow. Um, same with uh, JR Custom, or I'm sorry, Tools and Jigs for Boss Lasers. Follow and, and like. And uh, that way you can get the notifications of new videos. If you're on YouTube, um, subscribe and ring the bell. And that way you guys get notifications when new videos come out. So that way you'll be covered all the way around and uh, you won't miss anything. Anyways, thanks again. Everybody have a good one. And we'll talk to you next time. As always, laser like a boss.